My next guest, you know who he is, the Dirty Bird, Tim Means. He's going to be fighting on August 8th at UFC Fight Night. Tim, how's it going, man? It's going good, James. How's life? Uh, life as well. No complaints here in uh, Canada. How are things in uh, in Albuquerque? How are things going for you? Uh, we're, we're on lockdown uh, on this side of the mountain over here. You know, Jim's been locked down since March. Um, they just went back to phase phase one of no restaurants, dining in. So we're just everyone's on hold and getting stir crazy and mad at the governor. And it's just it's just all over the place. How's your family dealing with this? Because it's tough, man. I've been, I mean, we're phase three where I'm out here in uh, Vancouver, Canada. But I remember when phase one was coming in, it was a little bit difficult. You know, man, we have a huge family. And, and all in all, uh, we, we've been we've been healthy and safe. Um, I don't exactly know all the numbers that are coming in. But uh, I know a ton of people out here. I don't personally know anybody that has COVID. So maybe luck on my part. But, um, you know, something that... Uh, you know, kills people. We have to take serious and have a precaution towards it and things like that. But uh, I don't think any of, any of us have been here, so we're all trying to figure out the plan as we move forward. And uh, obviously, big fight coming up here on the 8th, like I mentioned. But I actually wanted to start with, uh, did you did you catch the UFC card on the weekend, UFC 251? Yeah, yeah, it was a fun card, you know, minus, uh, I guess, the main event. But uh, outside of that, it was a bunch of fun fights. Well, I wanted to get your thoughts on that featherweight title fight because uh, that's the one that everyone's talking about. How did you score it, this and that, uh, Volkanovski and Holloway? A lot of people felt like Holloway won. Do you think he won, and do you think it was a robbery? Uh, ro- robberies are it's, – it, it's, it's hard to use that word robbery, but I had, I had Max up three to two. Um, I thought he did plenty enough to win the fight. I thought he dropped. Uh, I know he dropped uh, the champion twice in the first round. I thought that should have been a 10-8 round or even a 10-7 round. But, uh, you know, I thought I thought Max did plenty enough to win that fight. Uh, should Title should have went back to Max that night. But, you know, judging is a hard criteria. You like to sit down with those judges. I always thought in rules meetings, we should have judges in the rules meetings when we're talking to the refs and, uh, you know, go over the criteria, what they're looking for. So we're all on the same page. But, uh like normal, judging is still uh, light years behind where MMA is currently. Yeah, I, I don't think it was a robbery because I think that third round was so close. I think you could have given it to either guy, and that sort of decided the fight, right? Because I thought Holloway clearly won one and two. I think Volkanovski, you could probably say won four and five. But uh, yeah, very interesting there. Do you think open scoring would have helped this situation, or do you think it still would have been uh, the result that we saw? You know, I, I think in a time we're in, no fans or whatever, no crowd. I think I think live scoring should be. In- it should be tested right now and see how it would work. I I, I think uh, we have to prove that judging and uh, uh, th- th- those types of things are, are changing and, and evolving. Um, so I, I think the life scoring should be tested right now. But, you know, each is their own on, on what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. And just one more thing on the judging. Do you think adding two more judges would help? Because that would balance things out a little bit more. Then you wouldn't get, you know, so many, you know, because three is not, it's not a lot, right? Like in terms of the judging? Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've always liked the idea of five judges, you know, and, and even when like there's fans in the event, then wearing wearing uh, earmuffs or whatever, or the, 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 the big, the big ear cover so that they can't hear the crowd and sway the judges, you know, or even in another room watching on their own video or whatever. But, um, like I said, we have to evolve there and there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of good ideas that are coming with that. And I, I'm, I'm sure we'll see that in the near future. Let's get back to you. Obviously, uh, the last fight didn't go your way. Uh, what did you learn from that matchup that you're going to be taking into this fight? You know, man, this has been a weird year. You know, going into that fight, my opponent changed so many times. I think six or seven times my opponent changed to get someone signed down to like the week before. You know, we buried two family members two weeks before my fight, Mateo and Pete. And, uh, you know, I fought that fight angry and mad and just didn't. Didn't do what I was supposed to do. You know, I, I wasn't fighting to win. I was fighting to, you know, just vent and keep my mind sane, you know. So um, we just lost another cousin not too long ago, another car wreck, not COVID, but another car wreck. And uh, it, it's just been a real wild year for absolutely everybody, you know. So um, I think if I learned anything from the first fights, I have to keep my keep my emotions in check and not fight angry. You know, I got hurt in the fight. I got dropped with a punch at the end of a round, and rather than trying to stay calm and find myself, I was getting in the pocket and trying to trying to go punch for punch, even while I, I don't know, I felt like I'd been drinking tequila all night. You know, I've been uh, I gotten rocked pretty good, and just trying to fight through that and show my community and my people that even though we get hit with adversity, we have to fight through it, no matter if it's in our favor or not. Um, but to, 
but to bury two of my close family members or close friends, you know, um, 16 and 14 years old, you know, that, that hit home. So, uh, like I said, so much stuff was all over the place in that camp. I was thankful to get to fight and thankful to vent some frustrations and, 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 and some anger and, and get that out of my system. But, uh, you know, I, I, I hope to learn that, you know, you can't fight angry and upset and mad and make mistakes. I hope I've learned from that. And, uh, I have a very fun fight coming up, a very tricky guy, and hopefully uh, I can put that work I had back in February to use in this fight. So I, I don't feel like I got to show what I do. Um, just fought angry with a lot of emotion and made mistakes. Really sorry to hear that, by the way. I mean, that's uh, that, that's tragic. I mean, 2020 has been rough on a lot of us, but that's uh, you add in that in, into the mix. That's uh, that's very devastating. So re- very sorry to hear that, but uh, glad to see you got this fight coming up here on the 8th. Like I mentioned, let's talk about your opponent, uh, Loriano Steropoli. Uh, 9-2 record. Uh, you mentioned he's a bit tricky. What else do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Oh, he's a good striker. He likes to be in the pocket. Um, I feel his best his best attributes are his spinning techniques he throws good spinning elbows off the cage and on breaks he throws good spinning back kicks and things of that nature he moves a whole lot so you know i have to make it a, a grinding gritty fight and uh win lose or draw just be exciting in what we do and uh get the fans clapping and yelling on tv since we won't have them at uh at the event but um, right now, man, I've been, I've been rotating wins and losses. I, I just want to put some things together and move forward on this stuff and uh, try to get a winning streak going and get my name in that top 10. Uh, a lot of good guys in this division, a lot of good athletes in this division. And right now I'm just trying to keep a job and, 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 and stay home and win fights. You, there's a big experience gap in this fight in terms of not just UFC fights, but I think you've got like what, 40 fights and he's only got 11. Um, how much do you feel like that will play into this matchup? It just means I've been there over and over. You know, I think I have with boxing and Muay Thai, they have like 43 or 44 fights total. Um, but, you know, guys are so good now. You, you can't underestimate anybody. Everyone's so athletic. Everyone knows what they're doing, ground and stand up. Um, right now, I, I have to show myself that I've learned from my last fight or my last few mistakes on uh, getting a little careless. You know, what happens in these fights is uh, – you know, I don't I don't get paid a huge chunk to, to lose. You know, I get paid a whole lot more to win. So you got to go for broke, you know. So um, mistakes happen when you're you're trying to put the, the, the pedal to the metal and get after it. Um, I just got to show myself and my coaches and my team that, you know, I've evolved mentally and gotten mentally mature in these situations and I just do what we do in the gym. So, um with uh, this young Argentina kid coming up, he doesn't have a lot of fights, but you could tell he's hungry and he's very athletic. You talked a bit about it there, the restrictions going on right now. Uh, how has training camp looked heading into this, just with everything that, you know, with all the precautions and all that? Uh, we've had to be very limited. Cardio's high, high, high. Lots of running, lots of lots of weights. Uh, strength conditioning, just uh, trying to get the cardio as high as we can. You know, you got the neighbors across the street where we're at, they, they're they're calling and reporting any traffic or anything through the gym or the parking lot. We're in like a little uh, shopping mall deal. Uh, so when you get one complainer, you know, you got to respect, you can't just disagree and start yelling and throwing things at people in the community. You have to come to an understanding and try to agree on each other's disagreements and come to a, come to a, a good answer, a good uh, resolution to the problem, I guess. So, um, we are trying to make everybody in the community happy plus get this training done and then getting in a fun fight. So um, lots of what-ifs going into this 2020 thing, but uh, we're figuring it out. Do they not know you're a UFC fighter? Like, don't, do you wear the gear or anything? Because I'm telling you, if I had to deal with, you know, COVID stuff, I probably wouldn't be messing with the UFC fighter. Yeah, well, they, they call, they have an anonymous hotline that they can call and report uh, people on. Okay, gotcha. What these people don't realize is that it's not anonymous. All you got to do is call down to public records or whatever, and you can you can find out who's accusing who you're. What's great about this country is you can confront your accusers on things. So we're not over there with a the pitchfork or nothing, banging on the neighbor's windows or doors or whatever. But uh, we have been locked down since March, been very very trying on a brand new gym 26,000 square foot gym so we just moved in so keeping the bills paid and trying to stay up to speed and we have some other fighters getting ready for LFA and 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 fighters trying to help one another and trying to keep our six foot distance on the bags and it's just a tricky year man we'll figure it out and like like always I'm thankful to have a job where we can vent and, and get anger out and do all that just uh 
got to keep things in check. So we'll, we'll figure that out as we go along. Who have been some of your main training partners in this sort of smaller training camp? Uh, my buddy, Steve Hanna, you have Sherwin Price, uh, Ty Miller. Um, a lot of guys are working, so they're having to find time to get in, like Sadia Parker, uh, John Jr., my wrestling coach. He, he, he's brought in a few few of his collegiate wrestling friends that are real high-level level, level uh, wrestlers. So, um, small group, stay within that group of five people where we, because you can't have a mass gathering or whatever, so anything above five isn't allowed. Um and just trying to figure out how to uh, – now they've mandated the mask. We have to wear the mask while we train and do all this stuff. So we're just trying to find our ways around that stuff, stay healthy to where we don't send things home to each other's families and things of that nature. So um, who's to say what's real and what's not? You see all these different things in the media and everyone's against each other. And uh, it's a big reason why I don't like politics. Everybody wants to be one side, and they separate us at the very top of the – top of the totem pole uh, i think we need to unite and get together and figure out a solution together instead of dividing everybody and you know everyone's got a different opinion and if you disagree with somebody then man they want to hit you with a hammer or grab a rock or something and get pissed and you know it's not solving any problems that we have in the world you know and this is something that's affecting the world as a whole uh we had these crazy riots not too long ago where they tore up albuquerque and these big cities and you know, you go to speculations and stuff on this, but uh, we don't need to be divided. We got to get united. Very well said. Yeah, I completely agree on that. Uh, we we got to start listening to everyone and not taking stuff so personally. Let's just try and work together. I think that's the, the biggest thing there. Um, how do you see the fight playing out on August 8th? Obviously, you feel like you're going to get your hand raised, but how do you see it unfolding? Uh, man, I'm, I'm expecting a fight of the night, uh, maybe even a submission of the night. You know, where uh, I've been using a lot of wrestling my last few fights. Sucks in the last spot. I got dazed pretty good and got caught caught in a choke or whatever. But, uh, you know, and asked how it went or whatever. Or did it hurt? I didn't feel any of that stuff. It was pretty fuzzy. <laughs> but uh, gone down, got some takedowns in my last couple fights, some ground to pound. Uh, just the one thing I'm disappointed in myself going back and watching those fights is I got the takedown and I chose to let the guy up, you know, or let the opponent up. Um, I want to be more top heavy and, 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 and work my ground and pound and get – get the fights finished from there or at least wear them down a little bit and then get back to striking. But no, it's laying and praying or stomping toes for 15, 25 minutes, whatever the case is, but, um, looking to get a finish, but, but be evolved about these things and make good decisions instead of, um, putting my neck out on the damn line every single time. There's, there's ways to finish fights and, uh, have some structure to it, you know? So uh, we're just really polishing up on that stuff and, and being top heavy and keeping guys down, grinding out, grinding out some time in the rounds to where, uh, you know, you can win, you can get some points built up and get look good in the judge's eyes, I guess, if they're looking for those things. But it um, doesn't matter if you can stop somebody in 30 seconds or stop them at the 14 minutes and 59 second mark. Uh, finish is a finish. So uh, we're trying to figure out how to make those things happen and move on. But uh, a submission or a knockout, always the thing you know get a wing get my hand raised that that's the idea um we'll just find out whenever we get there august 8th you know this is a very very tricky guy and i gotta take him serious really looking forward to the fight is coming up here uh august 8th ufc fight night tim it was so great getting a chance to talk to you glad to hear uh, you've made it work as they say right with everything going on uh if you want to plug any social media if you got any sponsors you want to thank the floor is yours sir yeah at means tim on uh instagram and i'm hearing from all the argentinian fans you go Argentina, well, go USA also. So it's fun to hear fans reach out to me and talk to me. You know, I met a lot of cool people from Argentina. That's been real neat. Um, on Twitter, it's uh, at means Tim, and then uh, Facebook is Tim Dirty Bird Means. So yeah, reach out. Let's uh, let's talk and go from there. But uh, I thank my team, my family, everybody. Stay healthy and let's figure out a way to uh, come together, get along. We're not allowed to hug right now, but air high all day.